Lena Nichols. I serve as your freshman class president. Here's our call to worship. I invite you to say your portion aloud. Holy One. May we speak truth. May we pray in faith. May we sing with joy. May we listen with our open minds and receptive hearts so that your words may give grace to us who hear. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I just come to you today to simply say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for protecting us in these two pandemics. I pray that everybody is safe and secure in the midst of the storm, that, he still, that, that we still have you by our side. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 15, and I'll be reading to you from the message translation, and it reads this way. But also on that judgment day, I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. I'll repair the holes in the roof, replace the broken windows, fix it up like new. David's people will be strong again and seize what's left of enemy Edom. Plus everyone else under my sovereign judgment, God's decree, he will do this. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everyone and everywhere you look, blessings, blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people, Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them, plant them on their own land. They'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given unto them. God, your God says so.
want to go back to this one part of the text that says things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings upon blessings upon blessings. My thought for this morning is this, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. Will you pray with me, my brothers and my sisters? God, we give you honor and glory. We thank you, God, that as life and death rested over, rested over us last night, you allowed life to win one more time. And for this, God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, that when our feet touched the ground, Satan began to tremble, knowing that we were getting up one more time to give you honor and glory. Lord, we thank you for seeing us through Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And here we are on this Sunday morning. We thank you, God. We are coming and pushing to touch the hem of your garment. So God, in this moment that we've gathered virtually, we pray right now that you move through the airways, oh God. Bind up any hand touch of Satan in the name of Jesus. We pray that while we are in worship, you heal our bodies, oh God. You reconcile our families, oh Lord. You give us a peace of mind, oh God. You fix our finances, Lord. Anything we sit in the need of, we ask that you would dispatch your angels at our request. And I, God, your woman servant, pray that you anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Be the door of my mouth. Give me clarity of thought and fluidity of speech. Oh, God, bless somebody this Sunday morning so that we will be encouraged to run on to see what the end will be. These things we pray in the name that is above every name. And that name is Jesus the Christ. Reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. I know that this is not a title or a hashtag that you have not heard before. So let me offer you a new hashtag as the I homiletic founder. Hashtag 2020 can't have it. Hashtag 2020 can't have it. Reclaiming our time. We know that reclaiming my time came from a bad sister by the name of Maxine Moore Waters. Late July 2017, when U.S. Representative for California Maxine Moore Waters asked Mewchin why his office had not responded to a letter from her office regarding President Trump's financial ties to Russian banks, Mewchin prefaced his direct response to the question with a series of formalities, mostly compliments to Waters. Waters, however, was clear that Mewchin might be stalling in order to avoid answering the question. Therefore, she put to use a phrase rooted in the House floor procedure to redirect him, reclaiming my time. This phrase has taken the internet by storm, memes, and apparel, and we've heard it over and over again, but it is still a clarion call we need to protest and declare that rings out beyond the congregational floor in 2020. We still need to be able to declare I'm reclaiming my time. Why? Because 2020 has been treacherous. COVID-19 has taken people out of our lives that we least expected. We've experienced personal deaths in our family. We've seen the deaths of major figures, civil rights activists, and even our own Wakanda Black hero. We have seen the death and loss all around us. There's been a change in how we do everything. We eat, how we go shopping, how we live at home, how we go to school. And we're waiting for things to return back to normal if there ever is a normal. COVID-19 and the double pandemic of racial injustices have brought to life the anxiety, fears, doubt that we as a people of color have been experiencing. And if we're honest with ourselves or some of our personal issues have seen the surface in such a way we've never seen before, marital issues, family issues, economic issues, educational issues, we're seeing things in a whole new way because we have had to have a global pause to reevaluate what's happening. But I want you, my brothers and my sisters, to declare in these last few months of 2020 that we are reclaiming our time. 2020 can't have it. Reclaim is a verb. It means to retrieve or recover something previously lost, given, or paid for, to obtain the return of something we've already owned and was challenged or stolen or that we put aside. Here in these last and few days of 2020, we are reclaiming our time. Re is a preposition in the matter of use typically is the first word in the heading of official document, meaning to confer what is ours. And today, my brothers and my sisters, I dare you to open your mouth and say we are reclaiming our time. Claiming is a verb or present participle to formally request or demand, say that one owns or has been owned. And today we are reclaiming our time, our joy, our happiness, our family, our loved ones, our jobs, our education, our peace of mind. We are reclaiming it today. And today we formally request to take back everything that belongs to us, whether it was lost as a result 
of something we've done on our own or because the enemy came and snatched it ourselves. But today we discover that there's a lesson in Amos that we can indeed reclaim our time. Amos is one of the 12 minor prophets, an older contemporary of Hosea and Isaiah. Amos was active between 760 and 755 BCE during the reign of Jeroboam the second, and he was from the southern kingdom of Judah, but preached to the northern kingdom of Israel. Amos wrote at a time of relative between the very wealthy and the very poor. He was a prophet of social justice. He spoke of God's omnipotent power and divine judgment. He became a staple of his prophecy. There are nine chapters in Amos where he spent about eight and three four chapters when he spoke of God's terrible judgment. However, he takes a turn for hope in these last few verses we find ourselves in in chapter nine. We find that he writes to indeed declare we can reclaim our time. How? I'm so glad you asked. We first have to look at God's promise. Verses 11 through 12 tells us of God's promise. The, break, the verses reference that David's house in the tabernacle of David became a place where David desired to dwell, but it had fallen apart, that the windows were broken, the roof needed to be repaired, things were going away, falling and becoming decay. The royal family was so impoverished that it was a power of bridge, the honor to sustain, and it needed to be laid in dust. But God promised that this tabernacle would be restored, repaired, and replaced. Hear me what I'm saying. The text tells us that God is going to fix every single thing that was broken. It was a promise to David and his descendants. And I believe that David's journey and promise also belongs to us. That despite what mistakes we've made in our life, despite what people have had to say, God's promise is that I will restore, repair, and replace. And it's so good to know that God's promise outweighs our mistakes, our bad decisions, our family drama, our current circumstances, COVID-19, a double pandemic, that the plots and plans of people cannot stand against the purpose and anointing that God has on our life. God says in Amos uh, that every single piece of this tabernacle, this house will be restored. Uh, metaphorically, that means for us, uh, our heart will be mended again. Uh, our mind will have peace again. Uh, our body will be healed again. Uh, our finances will be fixed again. Uh, our family will be loving again. Uh, our job will be stable again. This nation will be healed again. And I believe the promises of God. Uh, the promise of God is yay and amen. Uh, and because God's promise is still firm in 2020, not COVID-19, not police brutality, Nothing can take away the promises of God. If God said it in Amos, surely God is saying it in 2020. The promises of God are saying that I will be restored, that I will be repaired, that things will be replaced. And I'm so glad that God's hand is still on our life, that God is that kind of God. The promises of God, in order to reclaim our time, we must rely on the promises of God. And what are the promises of God? That we will be the head and not the tail. That we will be the lender and not the borrower. That indeed we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The promises of God says, yea, we are more than conquerors and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We can reclaim our time first by knowing that God's promises are still true and what God has said shall come to pass. And God said that I will restore, repair, and replace. Now, let me tell you this, that that process is not kind and it doesn't always feel good that when God is doing God's work, that sometimes we are uncomfortable. Many of us can testify that we're uncomfortable right now with some of the things going on in our life. But isn't it good to know that even in your discomfort, God is moving behind the scenes. I'm so glad that when people think you ought to be unemployed, God is still providing. I'm so glad that when doctors can't find the resolve, that we serve a miracle kind of God, that by his stripes that we are healed. I'm so glad that when people count us out, God has counted us in. And I am elated this morning to share with you wherever you are that there's no problem too big for the God that we serve. There's no problem too big for God to solve. Not even COVID-19, not death and grief and sorrow, not unemployment, not foreclosure, not repossession. We serve a God who will replace, restore, and repair. That's what God says in Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 12, promises the restoration of something that people thought was decaying. But not only that, we get to verse 13, and not just God's promise, but God's turnaround time. 
Alabama. I spent some time in Atlanta, Georgia. And of course, you can't live in Atlanta, Georgia without encountering the AUC. And I remember meeting young men from Morehouse who would declare a story about Martin Luther King, that while he was a student on campus, he would holler out, how long? And his colleagues would respond, not much longer. My brothers and my sisters, God's turnaround time in verse 13 tells us that God's turnaround time won't take long at all. We can think that we are behind, but indeed we are right on time. God's timing. God is the author and the finisher of our faith and faith. And you need to understand that God has told us that we do not understand a chronos, but God is moving in kairos. And the verse 13 tells us that soon and very soon, everything will turn around and it will happen so quickly that our brain, our mind will begin to swim because it's happening over and over again. The verse says that when we look, wherever we look, there will be blessings. I'm so glad to know that that's God's turnaround time. And you need to hear this, my brothers and my sisters. Wherever we find ourselves, God is in control and God will be able to reposition us in such a way that even if it's not our turn, it shall be our time. Can you imagine things happening so quickly, the turnaround time that your head is swimming, blessings upon blessings when you feel way up, I feel blessed. Here's what we need to know about God's timing and that here in society, in this nation, in these global societies, states we find ourselves in, there are four seasons to a year. There's winter, spring, summer, and fall. But God's timing, there is a fifth season, and that's the due season. I believe and declare that the season we find ourselves in, even in the midst of this pandemic, we are in due season, which means it's my season. It means that even when others are struggling, I'm a part of the royal priesthood, and God is working things out even for me when things seem bad. The good news here is this, is that it will not take long. I'm telling you that while 2020 may have been treacherous for about eight months, it won't take God long to turn everything around before this year is over. I still believe the promises of God. As we enter into this year, what God has said shall come to fruition. And here's where I get excited because I remember that the scripture says regarding Sarah when she was barren, it says, and he remembered her talking about God. I remember when Hannah was barren that the scripture says, and God remembered Hannah. So even in the midst of this barren season we find ourselves in, I believe the scripture is still being written for us and God will remember her her and God will remember him and God will remember us. That's the good news this morning. It's not only that we have God's promises, but God's turnaround time. And here I'm going to let you go this wonderful Sunday morning. The last thing I want you to remember is this. If we're going to reclaim our time, we've got to remember God's final report. That's in verses 13 through 15. Even in your due season, it may not feel good. And the Bible tells us that wine will be flowing from the mountains and the hills, from places and people you did not expect it, only so that God can get credit. The scripture says this, I'll make everything right again for my people, Israel. That's enough to shout right there. I'll make everything right again for my people. I hope you praise God right there. Didn't miss your shout. I'll make everything right again for people, Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined city. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them, plant them on their own land. They'll never, ever be uprooted from the land I've given them. God, your God says so. So the question I have for you this Sunday morning is this. Whose report do you believe? Because if you know whose report you believe, you have to stand firm on the position in life. And that position is this, is that I can reclaim my time because God is in charge of all things. Here, let's remember the sister we got this clause from. Waters made her defiant statement at the Families Belong Together rally in Los Angeles, which drew several thousand protesters against President Donald Trump's zero tolerance immigration policy. The rally was one of the hundreds across the nation. And she said, I have no fear. I'm in this fight. She said, I know that there are those who are talking about censoring me, talking about kicking me out of the Congress, talking about shooting me, talking about hanging me. And all I have to say is this. If they shoot, they better shoot straight. There's nothing like a wounded animal. I'm prepared to make whatever sacrifices need to be made. I want to know, my brothers and my sisters, that if you are like Maxine Water in this season, who you declared, I'm going to reclaim my time at all costs, no matter what people are saying, no matter what people are doing, or no matter what people are thinking about me, that you got to declare the word of God that said, I have a promise for you and it shall come to pass. My brothers and my sisters, reclaiming my time is not just a 21st century trend, but it's doctrinal and theologically undergirding our life. How do we know it? Because we can look in the
the Bible and see that God is a God of reclaiming time. Adam and Eve sought to reclaim their time as they were banished from the garden. Noah sought to reclaim his time after he built the ark. Jacob sought to reclaim his time when he wrestled with the angel. Moses fought to reclaim his time when he petitioned for our freedom from Pharaoh. Joseph fought to reclaim his time when he marched around the city of Jericho. And I know it wasn't just the brothers, but Sarah, Rebecca, Leech, Leah, Rachel, Hagar, Dinah, Tamar, they sought to reclaim their time. The woman with the crumbs from the table sought to reclaim her time. The woman bent over, the one who touched the hem of his garment, the woman at the well, and here at Greater Garth, those who are gathered this morning can say that Tisha and Tarsha, Dorothy and Mentola, Sherelle and Quinda, Rondolin and Chalice and decided that they were reclaim their time. And together, my brothers and my sisters, as we seek to reclaim our time together, we can declare the song of Hezekiah Walker. I'm a reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today, for I shall recover it all. Yes, we rejoice today, for we shall recover it all. Today, my brothers and my sisters, declare to yourself, declare over your family, declare over your job, declare over your education, declare over your community. Let's declare over this nation that we are reclaiming our time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, first I come to you first saying thank you, God. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for life and life more abundantly, God. Thank you for a mind stayed on you, eager to do your work, God. God, I thank you for the day and I thank you for the mission that you have bestowed upon your people, God. Now I just come to you in a time of need, God, asking for you to help me reclaim my time, God. Allow me to make better judgment. Allow me to redesignate certain tasks, God. Allow me to keep my mind and my time designated on you, oh, Father God. God, that I ask that you go into the highways and the byways and the dark alleyways and in the streets, God, that you bless your people and bless your people to your full power, God, because right now we are in a time of crisis, God. God, despite the situation and despite what's going on, despite illness and sickness, God, you have yet been there. You have yet been present, God. You have yet bestowed your mercy and your grace upon each and every one of us, God. God, again, I just cannot thank you enough for your presence, for your mercy and for your love and how you have kept us in this season, God, how you keep our minds stayed on you. Even in the absence of the church, God, you have still been you. And God, I thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do, God. And again, I just ask you to help me reclaim my time on today, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is your Dean of Chapel, the Reverend Dr. Dominique Aisha Robinson. I am elated that you've joined us for our worship at Wiley experience. I pray that you've been blessed and encouraged. Here at Wiley College, we support the spiritual, ethical, moral, and leadership development of all of our students you need to know that the doors of this church are always open. If you are in need of any spiritual support, or if you are a student and interested in participating in our virtual chapel, please email me at darobinson at wileyc.edu or give me a call at 903-353-6360. I look forward to connecting with you and making sure you are clear that God is still in control. With that, my brothers and my sisters, Thank you for joining us for worship. And remember, go forth inspired, glorious deeds to do. Oh, I live Yes.
And now unto God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we might ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that worketh within each and every one of us, unto that God be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, worlds without end. And let the church and the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Amen.